You're listening to Ricky and Jimmy on Relationships, the show where we uncover the thoughts and behaviors that are sabotaging your relationship and what you can do about it. Jimmy and I are passionate about sharing the ways that imperfect partners like you and I can shift unhealthy relational dynamics and create closeness. So welcome, drop your defenses and open your heart, eyes, and ears. Let's learn how to be the best partner we can be together. All right, welcome back. Um, so today we have a special episode for you. Ricky and I decided to do this impromptu episode. Sometimes it's really hard with our schedules to figure out when we're gonna film. And we just happened to make this work and we had this silly idea. Um, why don't we come up with like, we can either come up or look up with some controversial questions. Um, that Silly or career ending. Yeah. <laughs> what, what kind of idea is this, here's, Jimmy? <laughs> here's, the first, here's the first disclaimer. You are going to have your own opinions on these. Do, we yes. are not saying we are the authority on these. These are just like, hey, not even hey close. let's just talk about... Really, if I'm being perfectly honest with you, Ricky, I just wanted to find some, some more things that we potentially disagreed with because I like yeah. disagreeing with you in a pleasant way. And I like having I that too. stimulating conversation. So I kind of just thought about or came up with some controversial things that like maybe we disagree on these because we've never talked about them. So uh, yeah. the next disclaimer, we're not going to try to make this super long. Some of these we could probably talk about for a long time, but we're going to try to keep it short so we can continue on with the questions so that we can keep it interesting for anybody who's listening. Nobody wants to hear if this if that question wasn't interesting to you. I don't want to ramble on for 20 minutes on a question that you uh, don't really care about. That's fair. So um, let me start with the let me let me start with a controversial one, unless you have something that you want to say before I start. No, just a list okay. of controversial <laughs> questions to shock you too. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Should you ever sleep with someone on a, on a first date? Ah, uh, that that one's uh, all of these are going to be tough. Every <laughs> single one of these, I'm going to go. This is tough. So um, I guess it depends on a lot of things. Sure. I think the most important thing it depends on is what you're looking for. Because if somebody's just looking for it, I don't think there's anything wrong with people who are looking for a purely physical connection, a short term thing that exists, and that's okay. And if that's what somebody's looking for, by all means, do whatever you want on that first date, right? The stakes are incredibly low. Um, but should you say, should you say if you're, if that's, if that's your main yes. goal, should you like oh, say that up yes. front on the first date? You're like, so I'm not looking for anything. Mm -hmm. Like I'm 100%. purely looking for something physical. I feel like from an ethical standpoint, it's okay. imperative that you let somebody know, Hey, this yeah. is, I, if you, if you showed up with your heart in your hand here, that's maybe not, <laughs> not. What okay. I want you to say what you were going to say. And then I want to amend the question, you, but go ahead and say, you were going to say something and I cut you off. You were saying, oh, but. Okay. Um, yeah, but if you are looking for, uh, if you're looking to establish a long lasting love, um, getting That's physical question, yeah. way too early, um, can really complicate it. It can send the wrong signals. Um, it does send very short term, term signals. It can send very mm. short term signals. And I know that for me personally, um, my head gets just completely, you know, my, I, you might oh as well just gosh. put my brain into a blender because the moment I have a physical connection with somebody, I'm just like diving into the deep end. And it doesn't give me that chance to decide, do I like this person? Does this person like me? Do I like how I feel around them? So I okay, love you. that. I don't think I'm <laughs> going to be able to top that. I was, you don't have I anything loved, to add. <laughs> I love that answer. Well, if uh, it's my opinion, I, I, hate, mm -hmm. I for anybody who's listening, if this is your first time listening, I, I hate offending people. I hate saying anything that people are going to disagree with. So this is actually a terrible idea for me personally. <laughs> right. But if I'm like, if I'm like suppressing all of those, you know, yeah. feelings, then <laughs> um, if your goal is a long term fulfilling relationship, I, I, I would, and you came to me and you're like, Jimmy, should I sleep with them on the first date? I would say, no, please don't do that. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Um, it's ill advised. Does that mean it's wrong? No, of course not. Like no. do whatever you want. It's your life. But like, for sure. If, and but, I know yeah. couples who definitely hooked up the very oh, first time they met and that's, and they're fine and they're fine. Yeah. So it, it, yeah. it happens. Yeah. It happens. Sometimes it doesn't ruin everything. But I'm yeah. just, if you want but the most can. clear head, it can, <laughs> yes. And if you want the most clear head for a big decision like that, you should probably hold off on the. Yeah. I mean, I, here's a, here's a better question. Why, why are you doing it? I, I'm not saying it's oh. right or wrong, but like, why are you sleeping with oh, them on the first day? That is a, like, that's why? the perfect question. If, yeah. Yes. Why? Because it's an interesting question because like, you don't actually know this person. You just met yeah. them three hours ago and yeah. now you're sleeping with them. So 
Am I saying that that's wrong? No, but I am curious about no. why. Because, mm-hmm. because I think personally, I think your body is very valuable. And I think that you should, I just think you should be careful with your body, um, the most intimate parts of your body. And um, it was just, I would just be curious um, on, on why. Hit me with the next question. <laughs> okay. Oh, Jimmy, this one's going to derail the whole episode. Are you I'm ready fine. for this? Yeah, I'm okay, ready. This is I'm the ready first. for anything. I didn't think of this. This popped up on my computer. I'm terrified. Is infidelity ever acceptable? No, no, of course not. No. Why are you, why are you, okay, right. That no, one's if easy. You're not, yeah, if you're not watching this, Jimmy just made the most horrible <laughs> facial expression ever. Um, are you, are no. you worried that there are Hit me with who, another one. <laughs> no, <laughs> we're going to stay here a while. Oh, the uncomfortable okay, stuff is where we need. So I just are you, are you worried that some people would say it is acceptable sometimes? No, I think they're in the minority. Hmm. I mean, okay. I mean, in what instance would, I mean, I've heard people say <laughs> cheating is justified when it's like, well, he was never around or like, he didn't no, pay no. any attention to me. I'm just saying people say, no. people give that excuse or she sure. never, she didn't care about the bedroom at all, like at all. Right. And so I was I trying to, and I was yeah. trying like really, and don't get me wrong. I can empathize with how difficult it is to be in a relationship where you feel personally neglected, yeah. unappreciated, undesired. I, I under I can empathize completely with those, but I mean we should never we should never justify um, stepping out of our of our relationship because yeah. at the end of the day you can simply break up with them and then do whatever you want plain and simple exactly that what a good answer I I think we're hundred oh, percent on the same okay. page with that I've can seen I, people's oh, arguments oh yeah I've seen people's arguments that say things like. I don't know. What if my partner has sustained some sort of injury and they can't have, I, they can't have any right, kind right, of right. physical relationship with me? And I'm like, well, if you guys have talked about it and they're like, okay, and they're like, you know, get what you need physically elsewhere because I physically can't. That's not sure. infidelity. That's an agreement, you know. Yeah. So those, everything those else have, that have I've to heard, be pretty far, few and far between, yeah. but I understand. I understand. What oh my you're gosh. So rare. And so okay. I, I would agree with you. Infidelity. Let me give you a acceptable. more common one. Is it okay mm-hmm. to have a crush on someone while you're someone else while you're in a serious relationship or married? I don't think that we're able to prevent that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I really don't. I think <laughs> I don't. I think as humans that find other humans attractive, it'd be pretty dang hard to turn that off. I think yeah. a, a crush that you that you can't really control, but you act honorably about, you know, I can, I can find myself having a crush on someone and I can choose honorable actions around that. Like not putting myself alone with them, not texting them constantly in intimate ways. You know, the crush itself, I can't do anything about. I can absolutely do lots of things about how I treat that. That is so true. And such an important distinction. Like you're going, Mm -hmm. uh, that's one of the things that I would tell people if I was doing like premarital counseling, like you're yeah. going to be attracted to other people. Like you're going to 100%. be at work. You're going to, you're eventually going to come across somebody that you're attracted mm-hmm. to. Um, just, just in normal life, you're going to be attracted to other people, but it's how you manage that. And if you have a healthy relationship, you can really, uh, I mean, you can, you can validate that within yourself. Like, yeah, there's something in this person that I'm very attracted to. And, 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 and yeah. even, and even would, entertain the idea of like a relationship with them, kind of like a fantasy, but that, but there's a very fine line there between like, uh, lusting after somebody else or, you know, putting yourself in situations where I hope that we can like have a a connection and an emotional connection. Those are the things you really need to be careful about because, um, you can't prevent the fact that you're going to be attracted to somebody, but you can, you can protect your current relation, relationship by, you know, making sure you have appropriate boundaries and guard guardrails up on how I'm going to interact with this person. So, yeah, I love that. Just to add um, further controversy to this episode, um, my partner and I, we are able to tell each other right. when we have crushes on other people. Like that's, I think yeah. that's like next I've level trust. Yeah, you've heard of that. It's possible. It's I've never possible. Um, that, yeah. <laughs> definitely. Um, we're at a place. I mean, we certainly weren't like this at the beginning. But uh-huh. We're at a place now where I could say, "Oh man, this person that I that I saw or that I interact with on a regular basis basis, they're very cute. I have a little bit of a weird crush on them." Mm-hmm. And Chris will say, 
oh, that's that's funny, you know, and he'll, yeah. he'll go, that makes sense. He's a good looking cat. And that you know? response <laughs> like is that. so, <laughs> it's like so validating and so safe. Like, yeah. like when you know, it, it almost helps you when you're not suppressing it, it's able mm -hmm. to be expressed and it kind of like moves on. It's kind of like feelings where it's like yeah. when you suppress them, they get worse and they like come out in other toxic ways. Whereas totally. when you validate it and when you open it up, it's like discussion and someone's a safe person for you. You can process it and move through it a lot easier than if you suppressed it and like pretended ignored it and stuff like that. So I love your answer. Absolutely. That's Do you want to hit one. me with another one? Yes. It's these are this computer really kicked out some doozies though. But brace yourself. Okay. Um, do open relationships ever work? This, I love this question. I wrote down one for you too. Do if, you? If you, oh, uh, good. Let me, okay. let me answer your question. I'll answer your question with uh, and my question at the same time. I said, I said, okay. if your partner asked to be in an open relationship or to open the relationship uh, up and you didn't want to, would yeah. that relationship still work? And um, I'm going to go no on that one. I'm going to go, I'm, I'm going to go, unfortunately, no on that one. If you're in a relationship, you're saying no, you're I'm saying, saying no, no, it wouldn't to... work. No, it wouldn't work if one person was yeah. reluctant and yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't know what my opinion is on do open relationships work in general. I, I don't really have a oh. opinion on that either way. Like if three people want to try to make a relationship work, like I don't have any experience with that. I don't have any, my gut says that's going to be even more difficult than a two, than a two, <laughs> a two person. But, yeah. um, yeah, but, uh, but can it work? Sure. Like, sure. I don't see it's not like it can't work. It's, it's difficult. <laughs> I'm sure it adds a whole different dynamic, but mm -hmm. anyways, um, but I if one person wants an open relationship and the other doesn't, I just don't see that. I think that that's too big of a value. I think that's too big of a core need. I think that that person is going to really, really, really struggle to being in this monogamous, monogamous relationship. If they, if they really have a pull towards an open relationship, I think, unfortunately, yeah. even if they, even if they, even if they're like, okay, fine, I'll make it work. You know, I'll make it work with just mm -hmm. one person. <laughs> like you're, you're unfortunately fooling yourself. Like you're going to, you're going to, you're going to do some toxic things. You're going to hurt this person, even though you don't want to, um, because you're going to event, you're just going to, you're going to have this need, this pull somewhere else. So you really need to honor that in yourself and, uh, realize before you get in a monogamous relationship to, I actually want is that is actually what I want. Awesome. We're a hundred percent in agreement there. I, I think for open relationships to work and some of them do for sure. Um, you need enthusiastic 100% consent from all parties involved. And if so somebody's true. at 95%, you might have some trouble making that mm. work. Um, but, uh, definitely they do, they do work in the event that both people are both the three or four people totally on board. Um, if anybody's yeah. looking for some help with that, um, the book Poly Secure is supposed mm, to be I've fantastic. Heard of that. I've heard of that one too. I haven't read it, but everyone that I've talked to who has read it, just totally glowing reviews. So oh, cool. if you're thinking about or trying to make open relationships work from an attachment perspective, that's mm. the book that I would check out. All right, I'm going to give you one, but I'm, I'm pretty sure we're going to agree with the, on this one. Unfortunately, is it okay to have secrets in a relationship? Oh, I don't know if we'll agree with this on this one, Jimmy. I think that it is unavoidable, but yeah. I think I think the controversy only comes from what those secrets are, right? Mm, yes. If, if I am keeping things from my partner that I know would upset him, mm -hmm. that's that's a problem. But if I'm keeping things from my partner that are just my own private things that wouldn't necessarily rock the boat, or they're just my own little pieces of me that are mine, that's fine. I don't necessarily think partners owe it to each other to be able to see 100% of each other all the time, all my can inner I, thoughts. Yeah, please do. Can I push back a little bit? Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. And for anyone listening that that's like that this is your first time listening, you're, you <laughs> might be like, why do they interrupt each other so much? It's because we both talk fast. We both like yes, think yeah. fast. So sometimes we just interrupt each other. We're good with it. We've never I'm once complained to each other. Yeah. So if you have yep. a problem with it, um, 
It's a you problem. I'm sorry. It, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. No, no, no. And, <laughs> okay. and really like, the, hey, just on that note there, <laughs> if it doesn't bother you and I, Jimmy, it really right. might be something bothering them, you know, like which, this which, might not be you know the what? podcast for them. This might not be. And and I, you <laughs> yeah. know what? I, val- I validate and I empathize with how, how difficult Aww. it'd be if you're like, gosh, they interrupt and that's really distracting. Totally. Totally. So sorry I about hear, that. Yes, I hear you. And I wish we could change. We tried. <laughs> <laughs> we tried and we failed. This is as good as it gets. <laughs> so we just have to show up as our authentic self listener. So sorry about that. Totally. All right. So <laughs> what you said right there, I want to push back on because you said, if I'm withholding something that I know would, how did you word it? How, how, how would it would, that uh, I know would upset him? Maybe? Would I upset them? Okay. Mm. But, but listen, because if yeah. you're with an, if you're with an anxious attacher, or if you're with someone who has a potentially um, let's say I have a, uh, fear of you cheating on me because my past boyfriend cheated uh, on me. And so I have this thing where I want to look at your phone a lot and oof, you've tried yeah. to, you've tried to calm my anxiety. Like, look, I'm not, th- you can look at my phone, but at the same time, like you can't just randomly say, I want to look at your phone because that's not healthy. So like, yeah. so like I would only push back on you and say like, sometimes those things are going to upset her. like me just not giving you the information is going to upset you. So I yeah. can't. So like, but okay. No, it, yeah. I'm really glad that you said that. Cause that comment lacked nuance. Like sometimes well, I'm myself not gonna, or, you know, I, yeah. Sometimes sorry. my partner or myself are smelly, you know, and I, and it, <laughs> it being a hundred percent honest, right. It happens. Yeah, 100%. And being a hundred percent honest would mean that it's my job to tell my partner, you smell bad right now. Right. That's an upsetting statement, but it's like, there are a lot yes. of things that we can keep to ourselves that are, it's kinder to keep, but you know what they are. That is so you true. You, you're, right? you're absolutely right. You you're do. absolutely right. So yeah. yeah. Is this a, so, so secrets that I'm okay with that I'm perfectly okay. And you should be keeping, it's like Ricky said, it's unavoidable. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. You have a personal life. You have you have conversations yeah. that are on your phone. You have your notes. I have my notes app where I oh my notes app. where I will talk about. <laughs> I will use it as sort of a diary if I'm feeling something. It's kind of like a what do they call yeah. it? It's not a, jo- a journal. I'm sorry. It's a I'll journal. use it as yeah. a journal, <clears throat> and that is not information I really want anyone to see. So if no. I had a partner, if you have a partner who is like. Hey, I want to see your phone and I want to like scroll through it just because, because of my own anxiety, I need to, um, you know, I need to calm this anxiety. So you need to now let me look at all of your stuff. That is not okay. Now, one caveat, if you have just recently cheated on this person, Uh then they are going to be going through a whole whirlwind of anxiety and it is your duty to completely be transparent and let them look at whatever they need to look at. Um, yeah, as a repair attempt. Yeah. Absolutely. <clears throat> now, now that obviously should calm over time. Like they should know, okay, this isn't healthy for me to be like looking at his phone every single or her phone every single day. So they, yeah. you, you know, that's something that you need to be talking with a therapist about. But in the very beginnings of, of, a, of a betrayal, full transparency, you cannot be like, mm-hmm. no, this is my private information. Nope. Sorry. You already, you lost that <laughs> when you cheated on them with right. the current phone. So Regardless, we can move on if we want to, but that's well. I've got one more. I've got one more thing on that too. Um, I, I, I've said this to my partner too. Like, if you're worried about anything, you know, infidelity wise, and that's why people are snooping, right? If you're worried about anything, you can ask me anything, and I will have any conversation with you about any topic along those lines that that you want. And if you doubt that what I'm saying is true, that's an issue that we go immediately to therapy for. Like if yeah, you don't that. feel like you can trust me, but you still want to be with me, we go to therapy for that. You don't, we don't snoop through each other's Man, things. that is so important. Like, mm-hmm. cause at the end of the day, that really is a trust issue. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And sometimes well, that trust issues are justified. Other times trust issues are our own internal stuff that we need to deal with. So, um, yeah. so if you feel like I haven't done anything to betray this person and yet they are like <clears throat> really anxious about my personal information and and they're like kind of hounding me about it that's a that's a counseling issue because they don't trust you totally okay was that one yours or was that one mine oh that was mine okay i've got the next one okay wait wait can i do the next one because it kind of ties into what you were just saying about honesty and i i really like it let's do it if you're starting to find your partner unattractive should you tell them 
Oh, that's so hard. Oh, man. <laughs> terrible. Terrible. <sighs> but it's real. It's a thing that happens. It's very it happens real. to so many people. Can I start? Okay. Can I? Because can I, I just got a comment. Please do. I need got, to collect my thoughts. Wow. Guys, I just Ouch. got a comment. I just got a comment on this. So let me, um, let me, I was actually thinking about making or making a reel on this, but I'll just share it here first. You to, should. To I want to see that to reel externally already. Yeah. All right. Somebody commented to me, it was a guy and he said, I, I'm dating this girl. And she's kind of let her weight go a little bit. And she's, yeah. and he specifically said, okay, let me rephrase that. Cause it's not like she let her weight go a little bit. He's just like, she's not working out as much. And she's developed some belly fat is what he tells me. And okay. so, uh, and I'm kind of turned off by that. So sure. what, what should I do here? I'm kind of in a predicament here. So what I told him, he's like, should I tell her? Essentially, that was the question for me. Uh, should I tell her? I said, no, you don't tell her because one, because she's going to remember that for the rest of her life. Like that's yes, so sir. sensitive. If I was naked in front of my wife and she said to me like anything about my body, like in a negative way, like, Oh, that's kind of unattractive. I would remember that forever, especially something that yeah. I can't really change. <laughs> like I would yeah. remember that forever. So we want to, yeah. we don't want to ever do that to our partner. Even if we're like, even if it's like you said, like, well, I'm just being honest. No, there's sometimes where honesty is not kind. So, totally, um, totally. What I told him is your, if you love this woman, her body is going to change over the years. You, mm -hmm. you being unattractive by a little bit of belly fat is ridiculous because her body is going to change over Ooh, the years. See, She's going no, after, I feel like I got after, I, okay. Okay. You can push back. I mean, that's what this episode is, right? Okay. Please. It's, it's hard for me to hear you tell that person that his feelings uh, his not feeling attracted to that is ridiculous because our mm. the our physical attraction to our partner is not necessarily something under our control. So this guy True. is upset about this. He's he's I'm noticing feelings of re repulsion mm -hmm. in me mm -hmm. toward the person I love. Mm -hmm. He's not trying to be a jerk. He's like right. pointing something out that's upsetting and he doesn't know what to do with it. So True. I just want to push back against saying, try not to tell him that it's ridiculous. He's yeah, yeah, struggling yeah. with this and I he doesn't that. necessarily want it to be that way. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I actually yeah. said ridiculous, but, but you're right in the moment. That's okay. what I was feeling. Um, yeah. my only point was, is I just, I personally get a little, maybe a little triggered when I think about, mm -hmm. because like a woman's body goes through so much changes. And so, and if you're specifically kind of like, Oh, well, her belly fat is like unattractive to me. I'm just like, wow. Like, well, she's Buckle a up. whole, I'm like, she's <laughs> a whole person. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, mm -hmm. listen, like buddy, my wife had four kids. Like, yeah. like not to mention women carry a little bit more fat in their belly. Like it's, it, this do. is something that you're good. If you, it, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just saying like, you're going to struggle. If you, if you don't like a little bit of belly fat, you're really going to struggle with the, the female race. Like you're going to, yeah. you're going to struggle with <laughs> being with that's them. A, that's really fair to say. Um, but men as well, um, change as we grow, yes. you want to be with somebody long-term, they're not going to look as good as when you met them forever. And honestly, sometimes those changes can happen really fast, especially if someone's really depressed and they're eating a lot yeah. of sugary, carby foods that can happen. Uh, loving someone and choosing to be with them also kind of means that we accept I am in this for the long haul. Their body is not going to look supermodel or yeah. you know, it's not going to look as good as when I met them and I'm on board for that. Um, and there's so much nuance to this because like, of course yeah. it's so difficult when somebody's like, okay, yeah, but my partner has like really gone off the rails. Like they, sure. they don't care about their body at all anymore. Like you want me to be, I, I, you want, you still saying I should be sexually attracted to them. No, I'm not saying you yeah. should be. I'm like, yeah. I'm saying that's a, I'm saying when you're in a healthy <laughs> relationship, we should both care about our body, but yeah. heart health isn't a body type. Healthy isn't ah, a body type. Fair. That's so, yeah. but we should care about our health and our heart health and our obesity and our diabetes and all that stuff. So, yeah. um, let me how flip do you, this around. Yeah. Flip let it me around. flip this around though. We're, we're reaching time limit though. I got to be honest with you. Well, are we? No, okay. Oh, this is such a good one. This is such, <laughs> okay, maybe, go, maybe a whole episode for this one. Yeah. Um, if I, if I, if I imagine a world where I am depressed or something or yeah. overwhelmed and I'm kind of letting myself go and yeah. my partner, Chris is suddenly looking at me going, oh man, I'm having trouble being attracted to her because she's really gone gone off the rails. I like how you said yeah. that. 
Um, I would want, I would want him to approach it in a compassionate way, kind of maybe like a team effort thing. That would be the best way that I would want. I would want him to say, Hey, I've noticed that you are not making as much time for yourself as you used to. That seems to be affecting you. Would you like to hit the gym together? And he's like, I I, love that. Yeah. And he said things like that to me before. And I immediately in my brain was like, I'm fat. I'm not attractive. Right. Like those are the first things you think, but he was so wonderful. He was said, this doesn't mean that I'm not attracted to you. It's just, I notice changes are happening and I don't think you're, you know, I know that health is important to you. So let's do something about it. If you'd like to, you know, it was all about consent and reassurance. And I love that. I think in a healthy relationship, we both kind of would hope that we would want each other. We would not want our partner to have those struggles or see, see that we're in a struggle and never bring it up. No, I wouldn't want, I wouldn't want that. I wouldn't wouldn't want that either, Mm -mm. but there's an appropriate way to do it. Like Ricky said. So, right. And uh, I love that you mentioned too, um, there are things that he said to me that I can't change, that I can't get out of my brain, right? Yep. Like sometimes yep. I'm like, okay, like for the folks who are watching this. Are you doing a chin <laughs> thing? No, not a chin. I wasn't <laughs> oh, going to say, like, what's wrong with like, my chin, Jimmy? <laughs> no, you were just like, you were lifting up. I was like, oh no, is she I'm insecure about her chin? I'm showing everybody my nose here. No, I'm showing everybody my nose here. Nose um, hairs? Oh. No, my nose right here, it's oh. not symmetrical. So I see that now. Like, I can't for, yeah. I can't unforget that. I'm so I'm so I'm No, that's okay. But Chris and I were like having a romantic dinner and he was like, you know, giving me the googly eyes and then <gasps> he was like and then he was like, "Oh, your nose is crooked." He ruined it. <laughs> Just ruined it. And you were like, "I'm so insecure about yeah. that." Yeah, and I was like, "I knew it was crooked, but I didn't think anybody else could see that." <laughs> that is so interesting. Uh, yeah, it's funny. And he, it wasn't a criticism; it was just right. literally right, an right, observation. Right, right. And now I'm so. Worried but those about observations <laughs> hurt just as much as they me. Do, yeah, I know. They do. I know. I know what you mean. Uh, okay. I noticed here just just a quick. I noticed this tooth. My gum goes up a little bit. Can you see? Oh, that? and now I'm looking at my teeth. No, let me and see it. Get closer to the camera, Jimmy. I'm gonna, it's weird. <laughs> okay. Anyways, okay. so That's now I'm insecure so about that. So small though. That's when I, so when small. I do, Same when with I my do, nose. when I when I smile, like. <laughs> yeah. So now you got to try to hide your hide <laughs> know, your gums yeah. every time know, you I know, smile. Like, so I just smile with my hand over my mouth because that's right, no, which I'm is normal kidding. and yeah. I'm, I'm getting, I'm, I know that's a, I know people are like, I'm insecure about way more things. And I'm just, that's the most recent totally. one. I'm insecure about tons of things, but okay. Hit me with hey, another one. Thank you for saying that, Jimmy. I think you and I, we do pretty well and, but we still are people with lots of insecurities yeah. as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. This one totally unrelated to the last ones. Should yeah. couples share finances? Oh, I have that one written down too. Um, do you? Yeah. So people are going to disagree with this because it, oh, because yeah. my, my great. view is, is wrong in most people. <laughs> most people oh, would disagree. No. Okay. I, I think we should. I absolutely think like we everything. should have a shared bank accounts. Um, yeah. I just, I call me crazy. I just, to be honest with you, I was so naive. I did not know that there was another way to do this. So when we got married, we just mm-hmm. started sharing everything. And then I realized yeah. other people weren't sharing things. And I was like, yeah. How? I was like, how are you not sharing things? And they're like, oh, well, she pays the rent and I like pay this or he pays the rent and I pay all this other stuff. I'm like, well, that's cool that you like came to an agreement. Like if you guys come to an agreement, do whatever you want. But like, I just felt like personally, I want to, man, like I just want to join everything that we can. Like, I just want to integrate everything that we can from a, from, from a standpoint of like, no one can get taken advantage of. No one's going to get like, if we share everything, if our names are on everything now, don't Mm -hmm. get me wrong. Some people would say, yeah, but my partner went off. My partner went to the bank and like took my name off of this and this and this. And like, of course Mm -hmm. that's wrong. Of course that's wrong. But like, we just, we just did it to where we shared, we put our names on everything. Our cars are in both of our names, our houses in both of our names Mm are all the important things are in both of our names. And so, um, I'm not saying that's the right way to do it, but I'm just saying, it feels like the right way to do it, but that's it, just, hey, it's the right way to do it for you because I think yeah, we just sure. found our first thing that we okay, disagree good, good. on. And I and and I like what you said too about it's not necessarily the right way. I don't sure. do it the same way that you do, and for yeah. me, the way that I do it feels right for me. But yeah, I'm sure. I'm also not upset at anyone. I think it's very romantic that you guys share all the things. 
I think that's very romantic. I myself, not comfortable with that. And it's, yeah, it's definitely why. less romantic, um, but it's not necessarily right. It's just not, it doesn't work for me. Um, well, as a lot of the audience knows, I'm divorced, right? Yes. And um, in my previous marriage, we shared absolutely nothing, not a single penny, not a single asset had multiple names on it. Everything was already divided. And that hurt. That wasn't yeah, great. Uh -huh. I did not love that. Not sharing yeah. a single thing was very hard. Um, yeah. But in the same way, now um, I'm engaged now and we are not going to do the mix everything together thing. We yeah. have um, we have a shared account, uh, which I totally love. That's like new to me and I, I really delight in it. But we also still have our separate bank accounts as well. And I we both love that too. <laughs> All right, listen, for anyone who uh, is watching this, Ricky <laughs> just had to switch over to headphones because her earbuds died. So that's why you she know, looks and like I feel that. Weird. And she's okay. very insecure about it. I'm trying yeah. to come for her and tell her she looks perfectly normal. Tell me I look you like look a awesome. cool gamer girl. <laughs> you, do, you look like you're like doing race cars. Like you're about Sweet. to, you're about, yeah, you're like navigating the race car. Around. All right, okay. let me hit you with a question so <laughs> to throw you back into the, back into the loop. Okay, perfect. All right, after you get above a certain age, like 30, let's say, how much yeah. of an age gap is too much like it's kind of like a little oh. bit on the a little bit on the ick side i like that question if i'm 35 years old and i'm dating someone or, ma or marrying someone who is blank age when is it a little when when do you go oh yeah <laughs> okay i i don't know where these feelings come from but i feel like my ick factor is like my window of tolerance for that is low and i don't yeah, know me, I think why too. yeah i don't know why i think I think, okay, yeah. if a woman is 26 or seven or eight, I yeah. almost don't care what creepy old man she wants to date, right? Like really? I almost don't Even care. Even if he's like 40, you're like, oh, that's yeah. fine. Yes. Oh, oh, no. But, oh, oh. Right, okay, so maybe my window's bigger than yours. But if she's under 26, yeah. everything's an ick for me because I've been an under 26 year old woman who's oh. dating. And I feel like just the maturity level was not there yet for me. Yeah. Literally any man over 28 or so could manipulate me at that age. So, but honestly, I really feel like at 26 or 27, which was roughly the age I had my child, yeah. I kind of, for me personally, I was, I was good to go. I am not, I don't love the idea of a 26 yeah. year old with a 50 year old man. I don't love it, but I also think She's she's fully an adult, and if she wants to make her own decisions as far as love goes, I'm like, I've I'm seen go, it work. I've I'm seen gonna it go work. I'm going to go like seven years. Anything? Oh, just, you've I'm, got I know a that's, window. I, no, I don't. Oh. No, I just came up with it just now, so it could be wrong. But you yeah. know what? It's my opinion, so it's not wrong. It's just my opinion. <laughs> no, yeah, this is all about. If opinions. someone is thirty and the uh -huh. other person's thirty-seven, I'm like. Mm, you're pushing that, it. Uh, Better are you be careful. Serious, Jimmy? Wow. <laughs> I just don't. I just don't see the. I just think you're at two different life stages. It's like a, it's like a different generation at that point. Yeah. I don't. Okay. I'm 38 for everybody listening, and yeah, I have 40, I have so many 30 year old friends. It's not even funny, and they are fantastically mature. I I really feel yeah. like it. Um, not a lot of 30 year old male friends, but like lots of 30 year old I'm not saying it can't friends. work. I'm just saying I have sure. a little bit of an ick. I'm like, mm. I'm so like, mm. in your mind, mm. you would like people to be less than seven years apart. Yeah. Less than eight. I'm okay, okay. with seven. Okay. 30 and 37. I don't know, I'm so fine. my 30 sister, and 38, 32 and 40. I'm like, mm -mm, got it. nope. My, you're not in the same own. life. Nope. <laughs> Jimmy, my sister and her husband are 12 years apart. Wow. And they are great. They That's were a awesome. Great couple. So yeah. I think that definitely flavored my. Everybody has their own age gap ick. Everybody, totally. There's no right or wrong. Totally. Hey, and there it's right. I love it. I'm not saying the relationship can't work. I'm just saying I get a little bit. I'm like, anytime I'm, it's like, oh, yeah. I, so I met this great guy. He's 40 and she's like 31. I'm like, hmm. I'm like, okay. really? Wow, Anyways, Jimmy, that's only nine years. Matter. That bothers you, really. I like to it's hear that, though. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. I little, could, listen, I'm okay like, with I'm okay with being yeah. in the wrong on this one. Most people are like, "Oh, who cares?" I don't think it's wrong or right. We're asking yeah, about opinions. Yeah. 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 All right. Mm. How about this one? Interesting. Uh, no, you hit me with one. Um, should couples live one, together though. before marriage? Well, that's such a good one. I didn't yeah. have that one written down. How did oh, I not that think about that one? one. Oh, I'm so glad you're around. <laughs> so, um, 
I don't know. That's, a, that's such a tough one. Really? That's such a tough one. Yeah. That's not even know. close to tough for me. Yeah, I know. For you, you're obviously, yeah, of course. I'm a, uh, why is it obvious? Yeah. I, because I am you did, living yeah. with my... Yeah, <laughs> right. Did you guys not live together before you got married? No. Wow. How yeah. was that? Was that fun? Was that kind of exciting? Like a... Yeah, I, no, it's it's also, cool. it's also a shock because when you finally do live oh, together, yeah. you're like, you're like, oh, this is a different, different person. It yeah. is, a di yes, it is for sure. Um, yes, I am not traditional at all like that. I've right. never married somebody that I, I mean, my uh, my ex husband and I lived together for three years before we got yeah. married. So in this day and age, everyone is going to live together before, and yeah, I'm perfectly it's fine with that. Like, normal. do whatever you want, live your life. Mm -hmm. um, do you I have Do you have like reasons why you like? not living with somebody before you're married? That's a good I'm question. I'm curious about that. I, um, I, I don't no, know. sometimes it's just, sometimes this is probably a terrible argument, mm -hmm. but sometimes I'm like, why are you getting married? If you can just like live together, if you can just do all the married things and not be married, then like, why are you getting married? Oh. Or why are you like, I don't know. It's like, maybe, maybe it's like a dumb argument, but I just feel like, dumb. I just feel like it's like, I, I think I I'm just a, I can maybe I'm more of a traditionalist thinker. Oh, right. I can answer that for myself yeah, too. I, for, for me, marriage is a, it's a, another, it's a much bigger step than just living together. Is it? it? Yeah. Because living together, especially if it's a rental, you know, like it's so easy to just say, we don't want to do this anymore. We're going to find different places, but mm -hmm. marriage untangling yourself from a marriage, which yeah. usually involves just, you know, uh, splitting up harder. money, splitting yeah. up possessions, splitting up. It's a, it's a much bigger commitment in my mind yeah. for sure. Um, yeah. also, um, I mean, if my partner were to end up in the hospital for some reason, mm -hmm. if I'm not married to him, I don't have any of the rights that, you know, I don't know. There's like yeah, a lot yeah, yeah. of things that marriage brings that we don't have when we're simply living to each other. So I, I wish that there were more studies done because like I would I wouldn't have any good studies to back up whether it's beneficial because oh, it might be beneficial to live. Jimmy, together. there's tons of studies. There are. Oh, I'll have to. I'll send some your way. There are actually yeah. tons and tons of studies. Unfortunately for me, the studies are not so sunny about living together before. Well, that's marriage. what I was thinking that the results yeah. were, but I didn't really know why. And yes. So, um, yeah. It's it's. It's an increase in the chance yes. that the couple will split up in divorce if yes. they've been, lived together before marriage, for sure. You know that why? doesn't mean you know I'm going to stop doing it. Yeah, Do why? You know why? No, I don't. <laughs> because you finally see the real person. See, you need to be married to this person so that you're already committed. You're pot committed. So when you right. get in there and realize that they're they're so flawed and right. they're an and, actual oh, person just like you. Yeah, and you can't stand the way that they brush yeah. their teeth. Then you got to work through to those. Yes. You got to work through those things. I think you're right. Yeah. That doesn't <laughs> mean right. I'm going to stop. But <laughs> no, no. All right, let me hit you with another one. Uh, okay. Sleep in the same bed or separate separate bedrooms? And m oh. the question is more specific to, like, can you still have a hel a completely healthy relationship? Yes. And still and sleep in completely separate okay. rooms because some I people are like, no, you need to sleep in right, right. the same. I the hope same bed. that we disagree on this one because I would love to do an entire episode on it. Um, okay. Chris and I have different rooms in this. Oh, house. nice. We have different rooms, and in case I get too spicy with this, we have an excellent sex life. So d ha sleeping together in the same room with me snoring like a freight train yeah. and stealing all the covers, that kind of stuff actually gets in the way of the spicy time a lot more than, y you know what I mean? I do like know when we mean. can get good quality sleep in our own space, I can snore without worrying that I'm keeping him awake. Um, I love that. Yeah, we, we do. We start the nights together. Um, and then we separate to our other rooms and then we, we wake up together too. Whoever wakes up first sneaks up to the other person. No, uh, yeah. It's and it's so cute. It's, it's the cutest super thing cute. I've ever heard in it's my so life. Cute. It's so cute. It's like a, it's like, it's like sleepovers and, but, but, but not everybody. Gets I see. Sleep. I think that that is so, yeah. Like I see nothing unhealthy with that. Not that I would yeah, be judging your fun. relationship but anyways, but like mm -hmm. people that would say, no, you need to sleep in the same bed. Why? Like, yeah, well, yeah. but here's, here's the, here's mm -hmm. the ticker. You have to, the ticker is not a word, the, but the kicker. <laughs> you have to have what Ricky's talking about where one person doesn't feel like they're missing out on some form yes. of intimacy. 
Exactly. Sleep, wherever you sleep, it doesn't matter. You could, you're like, asleep. It doesn't matter. You're asleep. Yeah. You don't need to experience But what people that time. miss is the waking up together. They miss yes. the snuggling. They miss yes. some sort of a ritual of going bed together. So you have Absolutely. to incorporate all those things and th you just have to do it the right way. There's, there's yeah. certain people that sleep in separate rooms because they can't stand each other anymore. If they haven't been right. able to stand each other for 30 years, of course, yes. that's not great. But what's not going to solve that problem is y'all just need to sleep in the same bed together. Nope. That's totally. not going to do it. <laughs> totally. like <laughs> well, maybe you nailed it then The people are asking the wrong question. Right? Yeah. Should we sleep in the same bed? That's the wrong question. Yep. Should you prioritize intimacy in ways that both people feel really cool about? Do Love that, that, and then who cares what bed you're in? Right? I bet you. I bet you. You won't care. Yeah. If you. I, if I don't care. You know, prioritizing. Yeah. Yeah. All yeah. right. Um, here, since we're talking about beds, we, yeah. we're, we're we're both going to agree on this one, but it's still nice to hear it. Go to mm -hmm. go to bed angry or resolve it right now. Oh, I think we've talked about this one in the. We have. Um, once, we go to yeah. bed angry all the time. <laughs> a, a lot. It happens a lot. Um, yeah, and I think we, go to bed <laughs> we do, we do. And I think, um, I don't know how other people work, but my partner and I, sometimes if it's a heated issue, especially something that comes up right before bed, uh -huh. we need time to think about it on our own. And we that. need to not have that conversation when we're really upset. So for us, that is and, so and don't, important. Yeah. And don't get me wrong. Sometimes it keeps me up a little bit. Sometimes it's tough to sleep when you're upset, Yeah, but it's also tough to resolve a fight when you're upset. So, <laughs> okay. If I can jump in, cause I, yeah, I, I have so I'm many things to it. say that I'm going to forget all of them. Yeah, but do if it. you, if you're, if your only goal is to resolve the issue, cause it's 11 PM and you got into an argument at 10 oh. freaking 45 and you're angry now. Cause <laughs> you're like, I wanted to sleep, but now we're in this stupid argument. Yeah. If you're just, if your goal is just resolving it, sometimes you do yourself a disservice because you're not actually resolving it. You're just getting out of the conversation. You're just avoiding essentially. Right. And guess what's not going to happen. You're not going to go through the proper repair steps. If you slept on it, if yeah. you said, if you said, we're both upset about this, totally understand. It was my fault. I brought it up at 1030. That was to totally my bad. Can we sleep about this? Can we sleep on this? But can we pick this back up at a certain time and appropriately Perfect. handle the conflict, which means yeah. You go back to the area of disconnection. You both appropriately try to see each other's perspective. You, mm -hmm. you know, challenge the false narratives that you have that this person was just out to get you. And then you validate and empathize with each other's experience. Whatever the conflict resolution you want to go with, that's the appropriate way to handle that. You, you can go to bed angry as yeah. long as you are handling it the next day because that's way better than just like, ah, whatever, I'll just default to her because happy wife, happy life. So Absolutely. you're right, honey, you're right. Let's go to bed. Ugh. That's not going to result in any reconnection or repair. No. And the same issue is going to rear its ugly head very soon because you never actually did anything to resolve it. So, totally. Do you want anyways. another pro tip? Yeah, I do. From that too. When we go to bed angry, we still have to kiss goodnight. And it's hard. I love that. It's hard. It's usually one person saying, I'm still angry. Yeah. And I and still like, love I you, but I'm still angry. <laughs> I, I'm that's angry and I still love you. It, yes. that, that saves marriages. You want to know relationships. You, you want to know what right. saves relationships, the little things, that's yeah. the one. Yeah, I and it's great. It's, and sometimes I'm still super angry. You remember Stan, Dr. Stan Cutton, our buddy, Dr. Stan, if nobody's listened to that episode, go back and listen to that. Because he's so great. We're going to have yes. him back soon. Um, yeah, yeah, let's do it. He said, I think it was him. I could be mis I could be misquoting. <laughs> he said when when his him and his wife are angry at each other and they go to bed, they touch toes because it's a ritual. That was him. That was it's, him. It's yeah. I. It's it's that symbolizes everything. That symbolizes what you said. Yeah. I'm mad, but I still love you. It's yes. touching toes. It's we're coming together. Yes, it's our angry kiss right before we fall asleep. It's like I'm still that's mad. That makes the difference. You want to know what makes you. the difference between relationships that succeed and ultimately fail? That. That's it. That's Both it. of you should be doing that. All right, you want to hit me that with another one? one? That was um, mine. Yeah. Um. What if partners are a different religion? Yeah, I thought about that. I thought about adding that Did one, you and not I didn't add it. Well, no, I just didn't know. I was like, I don't oh. know. This is a, you don't I don't, know? I no. just, I don't That's think it can. That's a tough one. Of course it can work. There's plenty of people that are in relationships with different, with people. Who, it just depends on your, yes. depends on what you actually believe. Like if you really yes. want to go into religion, there are certain religions that believe you are not going to, you're going to separate places in eternity if you don't believe certain things. So like, right. how are you going to love this person so much? If Ricky and I were in a relation, a deep relationship and I was like, and she was a completely different religion, I'd be like, you're not going to the same place eternally that I am. Like how, how right. difficult is that? How difficult would that be? For you. Right. Yeah. Right. Personally, um, personally. And I, without revealing any of myself or my partner's religious beliefs, uh, we have pretty different religious convictions, him yeah. and I. And, and doesn't bother. It's, perfect, it's perfectly fine with yeah. both of us. But I think that's for, also, yeah. yeah. But I mean, as long as, as, not long to as mention both the people fact are that, okay with it. 
not to mention the fact that your value system differs different different depending on like which religion like i don't know so it if can, somebody it can, uh, just to like, push back on yeah, you there jimmy back. i'd say chris and i both have almost identical yeah. values almost yeah. identical yeah yeah so and different i'm just saying it groups. can it can be different. It can, if somebody if sure. somebody's whatever but um yeah. anyways moving on i guess <laughs> <laughs> Would you ever would you ever date someone who hated animals? No. Me neither. No. I Crazies. love animals so Crazies. much. I'm not saying hated Serial like killers? Is that they, who you're talking about? If they about? were just like if it, if they were just like turned off by animals. If they were like if you were like, hey, would you ever own a dog? And they were like, no. Or would you ever oh to your cat person? They're like, no. I don't think it I don't think it could work because I <laughs> yeah. I, I don't in I don't foresee myself ever living without a pet. Yeah, How about I don't that? have a pet, but I can't wait to have a pet once oh, I once so I'm great. not watching children constantly. I can't yes. wait to have a pet. Yes, um, so that would be a no from me. But I, hey, here's a here's a controversial thing: Are mm -hmm. long distance relationships possible? And of course, we would all say, "Well, sure, they're possible," but yeah. if so, for how long? Because like you can't oh. last forever. And, really, and what I'm really thinking about is people that are like going off to college, like, oh, yeah. so me and her are going off to college. We're going to different colleges, but we're going to stay long distance. Yeah. My, my instinct is y'all should break up. Like, really? I'm, so I'm sorry, but like, you're going to different colleges. Like you yeah. think that you're going to, you think you're going to be in like the same plane of life. Like this is going to fizzle. And unfortunately, yeah. you're just, uh, I mean, Jimmy, that's I a lesson it, those kids have to learn. They do. Themselves. I'm so. sorry, kids. I didn't mean to burst your bubble. <laughs> Uh, um, um, I, my partner and I spend a significant amount of the year long distance. And I That's think true. as long as both people are committed to maintaining the connection, yeah, it can be great. It can it be can. great. Even, even forever. There are people who literally carry on romantic relationships over the internet. And if both people are committed to making that wonderful and both people are feeling good about it and both yeah. people care if the other person is feeling disconnected, the sky is the limit. But it, all those things need to be in place. It also vastly depends on how much you need your own independence. Like, so, like, yeah. like you, 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 and Chris really like your independence. We do, but big time. Mm -hmm. That helps a lot. Like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Some people I don't, yeah, don't want to be independent, and they're 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 stuck in a long term relationship, and and they will soon find out this is not enough connection. Totally. Like, I need so more I, connection than this. Yeah. Thing. So I think we've determined that it depends on the individual, and it also depends on how motivated people are yeah. to connect and what people need. I love that. You want to hit it up? You want it? Was that yours or was that mine? That was that yours. Was yours. Um, um, is it okay for partners to have very different political views? Yeah. I mean, it's okay. You can make it work, but gosh, is it going to be hard? Like, uh, you're, uh, it's, it's, you know, that's another spot. It depends on how political you are. Depends ah. on like, Perfect. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. There it yeah. is. My partner and I, very, very different political views. Yeah, but, but you don't let it get in the way of your care. life. Yeah. Well, neither of us care exactly. about politics enough for it to matter. That exactly. Yes. If you're yeah, and that can obviously that works all day. But yeah. if you really if you really care, if you're if you're both really adamant, like man, are you yeah. gonna butt heads? That's you're gonna, gonna be butt a heads. Because especially in today's political age, everyone thinks the other party is an idiot. It just yeah. massive idiots. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. Doesn't matter How what can, party you fall on, they think totally. the other party is completely buffoons. <laughs> yes. And if and if that's your opinion on it, how would you have a loving, respectful relationship yeah. with a buffoon? You couldn't, right? <laughs> right? It's not possible. I, I like that word now for some reason. <laughs> it's How good. are you going to be in a relationship with a buffoon? Yeah, you aren't. It's it's scathing, but it's safe. That's let me give I you like an that. let me give you an easy one. Is it okay to be friends with your ex? Oh, is that easy because you I was know kidding. how I, I feel kidding. about that? No, uh, I was just kidding. Okay. Like, um, uh, it depends. Obviously it depends. <laughs> yeah, it depends. Um, my partner and I are both very good friends with our exes. Um, yeah. And it works because we are both completely and utterly transparent about mm. the communications and the, you know, all the things that would upset our partner. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you're not somebody who wants to be transparent about that, or you have a bunch of lingering romantic feelings, that'd be a really terrible thing to try to argue. But yeah, I've heard both sides. Like anytime I make a video on being friends with uh, some people say, I'd be worried if they didn't have some sort of a friendship, like it's ah. a green, it's a green flag. If they have a friendship with their past ex, yeah. I can understand that side. I can, yeah. I can understand the other side of like, why do you need to be friends with your ex? Like, unless you have kids with this person, can mm -hmm. you like, like I, I can just saying I can understand their viewpoint. There's some people yeah. who have the viewpoint of like, move on. Like they were your ex and now you're in a relationship with me and you're like still texting this person. Like, 
I'm yeah. okay if that bothers me. Like, I don't really want you texting Christine, who you just slept with a month ago, and now you're in a relationship with me. Like, oh, oh, oh well, you're friends? Oh, you're friends with her? Oh, yeah. well, um, I don't need you to be friends with her. You kind of need to be committed in this relationship. That doesn't make sense to me. I think the time frame that you just mentioned there, too, is also a little suspect. Um, if people yeah. break up and there hasn't been any significant time of separation, mm, that's yeah. iffy just from a biology standpoint because people are still very chemically you know, drawn to somebody, even if they yep. decide it doesn't work. So, um, in the, in the friendships that my partner and I have with our exes, a significant amount of time had gone by where yeah. we had not hung out with them or seen them enough that we felt that we were sufficiently disconnected from that romantically. Yeah. How about Hit that? me with another one. Um, please. my list is please. Well, don't say please. My list is my oh, I'm sorry. I just don't want to be so demanding. <laughs> oh, I can go. I can go. I got another one. Yeah. Um, all right. This is a weird one. <laughs> I wrote it down because I, like, I, I thought like it was, weird. I thought Let's it was funny. Oh, this is so weird. I'm so sorry. Ooh, I, I just thought of one for oh, the hit next me. time. Oh, okay. Um, can a relationship work if two people have very different sexual tastes? I, I wrote down a similar question. I skipped it. Oh, I said, did? can a relationship still be considered healthy if one partner wants sexual intimacy, but the other has no interest? It's kind of the similar question. Oh, it, it's similar. It's similar. I mean, I guess this is assuming people have, you know, a healthy match of, of frequency and desire for that stuff. I'm saying one person wants to do sexual things that the other person is like, nah, that's yes, that yeah. relationship can absolutely still be healthy. Um, yeah. We all have our own kinks and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and I didn't even know I had kinks until I kind of just like, the more you experiment with your partner, you're like, oh, Aww. this is kind of like, like, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I didn't know, I had, I didn't know this was in there. Yeah. Um, there's some that she is, she's like, yeah, I'm on board with that. And there's others where this is all about just like, you know, when you're in a, when you're in that trusting relationship with another person, you can be playful in the bedroom. You can be all yeah. this stuff. And there's, and there's completely appropriate things where your partner's like, yeah, I'm not just, I'm just not into that. Yeah. And if that is like number one on your kink list, like, well, mm. I was really hoping I could dress up as a bear and then right. like, you could call me it. your teddy Great bear. Example. Like, Great example. <laughs> there, it's perfectly okay for, for you to just, I know it's probably difficult. I've never had that where it's like, where I really want to do something and my partner's just like, no, I'm not doing Aww. that. Um, Jimmy, you have to donate that bear yeah. costume. Yeah. <laughs> That's not good. But I know that you can make that work. Like, now, don't get me wrong. I do think it's really a loving thing for you to be curious about your partners. Like, tell me what turns you on. Like, tell me what you... Yeah. And if it's in your wheelhouse, I think yeah. it's a very loving thing to do to be like, I'm open to certain... Like, g give me your list and I'll yeah. tell you what I'm open to. Yeah. And if, and unfortunately, I nothing is on... If you're like, if you wrote down <laughs> 10 things and they're like, I'm not doing any of that junk, oh. y'all probably aren't really compatible oh, in the bedroom that's and that's, that's hard. Tough. Yeah. I also um, I also like to think that I'm pretty open to trying almost anything once, right? Yeah. Like if it's on his yeah, list yeah, yeah. and I'm like, I don't know about that. But if you, if it's important to you, I'll give it a shot. Yeah. We'll see. You never know. At some of it, I've been like, oh, that actually was really fun. So right, right. The yeah. bear costume. Primarily. The bear costume. We have. Well, it's a different animal for us, Jimmy. But <laughs> I have a, I have a great book. For I don't want to insult too, any of the furries out there. <laughs> No, that's because it's because it's perfectly legitimate to like yeah, whatever dude. you like, you know. Yeah. Link up with um, your other furry people and this isn't, go oh, to it's going to be mirrored so they can't see it. But tell um, me what you want. No, tell I'm, me right. what you want yeah. by Justin Le Miller is okay. one of my very favorite books. Like I've got a bookmark in here right now. Neato. Um, it's all about the psychology behind um sexual desire and fantasies. I love and that. And it's it's nerdy, titillating fun. It's yeah. a good one. I, <laughs> I love is that, is that the tagline on the back? It should, should be. It's me. I wrote the tagline. No, it <laughs> yeah, should yeah, yeah. be. That would be amazing. Now, having said that, there's a whole. We, we did a whole episode um, with Dr. Lauren Fogel Mercy. Yeah. On different sex drives and all that stuff, because that stuff yes. is a big deal. And I it's a and big I deal. I'm sure there's a lot of people that are like, well, I'm hoping that he would go into that. And I'm like, of course, it's so important when you to. There's so much empathy that you need to have on both sides. There's nothing wrong with your higher desire Perfect. partner. There's nothing wrong with the lower desire partner. 
Uh, and there's the nothing is, wrong with partners that want things that you think are a little weird or different. There's yeah, nothing wrong with no, them. No, we shouldn't that shame that person that. for that unless yeah. it's disrespectful or like, you know, yeah. Like or degrading. a bear costume, which is clearly <laughs> unforgivable. Yeah. It's not at all. <laughs> no, um, it's great. I don't know why it's I'm great. defending that. I don't have a bear costume. I don't. <laughs> they don't believe it. you, Jimmy. <laughs> no, we haven't done it. We, You know, we, we've never done anything. Part of me, I read something somewhere like you need to go to a hotel, you need to dress up and then like pretend like you're strangers. I, I think I would be into that. I want to do something like that. Wow. That doesn't appeal to me at all. It's oh. so funny how, how different things work yeah. for different people. Yeah. Yeah. It, that you, you see, should, that's like I a kink. That. That's like a thing. It, we're not always talking about like weird right. things in the bedroom. That's yeah. certain things like that where, where you might find that you both really like that. Like, Oh, we went to a, we went to a hotel. We both dressed up. He yeah. like hit on me and pretended I am a stranger. And I, it was that's like, funny. it was really cool. Aww. That's um, fun for them and you. I, for me, the, I'm like, that nah, doesn't do anything for me. But back to the lower libido high, because I, I know that dynamic is so hard. Um, yeah. The biggest thing, I know it's, it sounds like a cop out, but the biggest thing is like just trying to have an empathetic conversation about it, where you yeah. tell your higher desire partner, I understand that you want this more and like, there's nothing wrong with you. I'm not shaming you. And, and, and it also right. helps to tell them if there is something wrong in the relationship, if you don't feel emotionally connected to them, if you feel like they're just kind of jumping, you're jumping on you and they don't, they're not, there's no real, um, what sort of like romance in the relationship. Yeah. Those are some things you need to talk about. Like, you know what I think would help me a lot is like a romantic, a more romantic element. Like, and these are some of the examples of that. And of course it's our job. If you're the higher desire partner, male or female mm -hmm. is to be, is to listen and understand, like you know, try to it. see their perspective and yeah, lower desire partners as well. Um, it's on you to know what your key is and hand your partner the key. If you wow. can imagine what yeah. would turn you on and they're not doing it, you got to talk to them about that. For sure. Let the, and not in a, not in a, well, if you would only do this, yeah. then this would happen. Don't do it that way. But say like, yeah. Here's what I've been thinking about that sounds really fun yeah. that I would really like. And believe yes. me, that higher drive partner is going to be listening. They want that, that key. Or yeah. at least they should. Like, or they that's should the, want the, that That's key. <laughs> their role is to listen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, of course, and, and if you're in that situation where you're like, I want to have desire for them, but I don't at all. Oof. And yeah. that's something you probably should be talking to a counselor about. Like, because... Totally. Or a sex therapist like Lauren, like Dr. Lauren, yeah. um, yep. because they can help you with that. They can kind of figure out well, what, what what's going on. Maybe maybe you're struggling with depression. Maybe you're struggling yeah. in this other area. Maybe you're stressed to the max, and your partner gets all, he like for me stress release. That can be a form of stress release for me. Whereas totally. Some whereas Emily, when she's stressed, that's like the op. She's like, please don't touch me. I'm so stressed right now. Yes. So uh, if you those guys are want things more, you got to work through. Totally. If you guys want more info on exactly what Jimmy just said. Um, Emily Nagoski's Come As You Are yes. talks about stress being an excitement thing for some partners and, and stress being something that dampens sexual excitement yes. for other people. Man, that's yeah. a good book. If you haven't read that. that one, that's the one. I love that. Um, I don't even know if we should do this last one. It's stupid. It's stupid, but it, but it might it. be controversial. If, <laughs> if your spouse, God forbid, passed away, uh -huh. what, what's the considered, what would be considered the inappropriate amount of time to start dating? Oh, that's not stupid. I okay. Wait, like, do you have like a, a do you have a time in your head? Oh uh, no, I was just like thinking. Like, I want if, you to if, get a time in your head, and I will too, and we'll say it at the same time. Uh, okay, I'm okay, uh, and then we're gonna say what an we're gonna say what an inappropriate inappropriately fast. Yeah, correct. And and try to stretch yourself to the limit so that because obviously one hour is silly, and we're not gonna say something <laughs> short like that, right? <laughs> correct. So I'm stretch not, it. I'm not stretch it say, as far as you can. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I got it. Okay, your partner passes away. If if you started dating somebody, what would most would most people go? Oh, Ick, oh, yeah. oh, you're going on a like, date? What? Oh, wow. Okay, are you ready? We're gonna yeah, say I think it. I'm ready. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna say it in three, two, one, three, three months. months. Hey, we're hey, so good. Hey, that's it. That's what. <laughs> did you just did you just copy me, or is that really? <laughs> is that really? <laughs> no, I that promise. That must be it. We've solved the problem. We solved for it, everyone yeah. listening. It's three months. So wait. Do not date anyone sooner than three months, please. <laughs> no, that'd be really offensive. Even sure. three months would be. You're wow. Like man, please. take it slow. If you okay, wait, you gotta wait. Grieve. What were they? Was it an unexpected, like very sudden death or was yeah. it like something yeah. that you saw coming? No, no. I don't no? think regardless, I don't think it matters. I think you owe that person at least like six months. Really? Uh, I don't know. Can I There's say no something rules. controversial? If I yeah. died, especially if it was something that was 
that we could see coming. Yeah. I don't need Chris to, to yeah. mourn. I really like, I want him. I mean, obviously, I don't need him to mourn. mourn. <laughs> I don't obviously, need him to mourn at all. Yeah, don't, feel, don't worry about me. No, obviously, he's going to be really bummed, but I don't yeah, want him yeah, to yeah. feel like he needs to put his life on hold. Right. If he bumps into a beautiful woman at the grocery store and it's only yeah. been two months since my death, by all means, talk to that woman. Maybe don't jump in the sheets right away because that's a bad wow. way to start a long term relationship. About that, yeah, exactly. <laughs> But for for real, I don't need him to. I don't need him to. Hold it's very interesting. Back. It's a very interesting yeah. debate. Yeah, I don't. Mm-hmm. I think. I think you just get into one little hiccup where if you jump in too quickly to another relationship, you might be just doing it to avoid the feelings of totally, grief and all yes. that stuff. So you just want to make sure you're not doing that. Is there yeah. a time limit? No, of course not. Four months is like. But yeah. I mean, is it a little bit strange if you've been married to somebody for twenty years, they pass away unexpectedly, and then you're dating someone four months later? Uh, it's well, like. Oh, like, yeah. but at the same know. time, is there anything wrong with that? No, no. My wife so. asked me, can I tell you a funny story? My, yeah. <laughs> this was okay. My, 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 uh, my Emily's brother just got married a couple years ago and they're, mm-hmm. there's, they're a great couple. They're one of my favorite couples and they're very lovey dovey. And mm-hmm. they, um, Emily asked, the question. she set me up because she asked me the question oh. after she had already asked them, if, if your partner passed away, would you, when would you? start dating again yeah and um they had already answered she asked me and i was like i was like um i was like i don't know like a year and Uh they had said listen to this ricky they had said never they were like 29 years old they were like we would never if she passed away i was like and i said i said a year and is it because we're old (laughs) is it because we're older i mean they all Oh, never is a really yeah. long time. It's oh, a really long time. <laughs> well, I called BS on it. Obviously, I was yeah. like, "Never." Oh, great! I'm so I'm so glad you were still guys are so in love. Like, yeah. you thought that they would. So, if, of course, everyone looked at me like, a "Year? Like, do you even love him?" Oh, that's I was like, so funny. I was like, "What do you want from me?" I was like, "I'm I'm sorry." Oh like, I well, you start... know, I'm not judging you. I said three months, and I said I want him to talk to the woman at the grocery store sooner yeah. than that. Yeah. Oh man, it Anyways, uh, it I reminds me too. We were walking, and I said. um, you know when our when our dear our our dog Kinley, yeah. I was like, when Kinley passes away, oh. like, are you gonna? What kind of dog do you want next? And he was like, I'm not getting another like, dog. I can't even think never. about that. Yeah. I would never get another dog. That's what he said. <laughs> and I want the listeners. Kin, she's eight, so you know uh-huh. it's she's getting yeah, up yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. But when it happens, if we're still doing this, Jimmy, I'm gonna come back to this moment and I'm gonna yep. say. I got Chris a brand new puppy yesterday and he's completely in love and great. I just, that's what I have envisioned. <laughs> I know that is so sad. And yet everybody, like everybody loves their dog infinitely. And I totally get that. And yeah. at the same time, when, un- when they unfortunately pass away, like, and they, when you get a new dog, you're like, I love this one too. Like yeah. I love this one too. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. It's this so was true. fun. I think this you was were fun. Here, I think you were looking for a fight that didn't happen. <laughs> no, I think this was perfect. I hope okay. that people, I hope that people enjoyed it. I think it means we're still going to be fishing for a topic that gets both oh, of us we, really upset. And, yeah. I don't not know. Like, not like angry. I don't know if that. I don't know if we will find that one. I think mm-hmm. we did a good job. We disagreed on plenty of things this time. We yeah. did. We did. I. I love uh, somebody in the YouTube comments said that they really liked um, our respectful disagreement. Yes. It wasn't that. Did you see that? Comment? Because we're friends, and because sometimes we're friends? friends. Sometimes friends are the best encapsulation of like what a relationship should be. Minus sometimes. the like, minus the you know intimate parts. Yeah. But like just the just the idea of like camaraderie, collaboration, trust. Like yes, we're, and respect you know, yeah. over respect. things that Thank are you. different. You know. Yeah, yeah, I think that's so important, and that cool. and that's that's why so often people experience so much intimacy in their friendships, maybe even more uh, than their more than their romantic relationships. It can be a very safe place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. love that. Well, cool. All right, well, this was fun, yeah. and we'll see you guys in the next one. Yep, thanks for listening. <laughs>